everyone, it's Sarah, the owner and maker behind Multifarious Nature. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you are a new viewer, welcome, and if you're a returning viewer, big welcome back. I'm so glad you guys are here. If you haven't done so, please feel free to subscribe, and if you hit the bell, you'll be notified when new videos are posted. And if you like the content, please do give it a big thumbs up, because that does help me um, reach other wonderful people like you guys, and I'm so glad that you found me. So... <clears throat> I usually start with shop update information. As far as shop updates go, uh, this is more just like housekeeping that I'm going to talk about. <laughs> I haven't done any dyeing. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I hopefully will get some dyeing in tomorrow. That is the goal, but my car is being kind of weird, so I'm not sure if that's going to happen. I'm hopeful. I'm very hopeful, you guys. But um, at the moment, it's just kind of being weird, so I'm not quite sure what's going on with it. It's working, but... It's throwing all kinds of lights. So, <clears throat> as far as housekeeping end of things, um, yeah, if you guys aren't aware, I do have a newsletter. It goes out at the most once a month, so I don't do it very often. And it's um, just kind of a short little, little newsletter, uh, some updates as to what's new in the shop, uh, what's new with Multifarious Nature, and if there's any just fun things that I discovered related to fiber arts, or even not related to fiber arts. I'd love to just share some fun things that I've found, stumbled upon, maybe recipes. <laughs> it could be anything. But um, yeah, if you do want to subscribe, I'll include the link down below. And you can just follow that link and sign up to receive the newsletter and find out all kinds of fun stuff about Multifarious Nature. And... So that's that. As far as everything else, we're going to get into whips and then kind of like a what's next section I'm just kind of throwing in. I like to mix things up a little bit, but the whips are usually always next and I've only worked on two this week because I did a lot of spinning, you guys. I was spinning a lot at the beginning of the week, which was so wonderful and relaxing and just a nice change of pace. I love knitting. But it was just a nice change of pace for my hands to just do something different. And if you haven't ever tried spinning, I do highly recommend it. I realize a spinning wheel is not in everybody's wheelhouse, you know, <laughs> wheelhouse. Um, <laughs> but, you know, if you can get your hands on a spindle, a drop spindle is kind of an acquired taste, I think. I've used a drop spindle myself, and it's very slow, and... It's not a big deal. However, if you really want to get to the knitting process of working with your like spun yarn, it's quite labor intensive and it takes a lot longer than if you're using a spinning wheel. However, it is quite a bit more affordable and easier to come by where spinning wheels can be quite expensive. Um, very expensive actually. <laughs> they are well worth the money. They spin up a lot of wool in a relatively short amount of time. It still takes a decent amount of time to spin up a skein of yarn, but if you're heavily committed, like doing a lot of spinning in a weekend, you could, I, I would say I can fairly <clears throat> throw out there that you could do a, at least one skein of yarn in a weekend, which that's huge because that involves winding up two bobbins or one bobbin and then plying it which if you're doing it by hand with a drop spindle takes a very long amount of time. So, because if you're doing it with a drop spindle, you have to not only spin it on the drop spindle, I'm not an expert on this, you guys, this is just what I've learned, but you then have to take it off of that spindle and um, either cake it up or like, um, cake it up where you can pull from the center and the outside, I've only done this once. <laughs> I had a, I have a Turkish uh, spindle and it's a large um, drop spindle, but I want to say it, because it creates like a turtle shape is what they call it. And then you can then pull from the inside and the outside and ply from that. So it saves you that extra step, but it does, it takes a lot of time. So um, definitely a fun way to get your hands into spinning. But I highly recommend trying wheels at spinning festivals. There, I, I don't know if there's a spinning festival near you, but uh, here in Michigan, there's the Michigan Fiber Festival, which is down south. That's usually in August. It's um, 
in Allegan, Michigan, which is like kind of southwest Michigan. It's, it's, it's um, yeah, it's a really, a really nice little town area and it's a great festival. I've been there a couple years now. It is so much fun and I really look forward to going next year. I'm still debating trying to apply to be part of the Michigan Fiber Festival this coming year. Um, <clears throat> they are definitely gonna, they're accepting applications, so I would kind of need to figure that out sooner rather than later. I just really want to build up my inventory quite a bit, and I want to be realistic because I do this very part-time, but I do have my Fridays available to do my dyeing now, so I could really uh, get a lot more dyeing done. So I'm, I'm really, I'm trying to seriously consider it. But um, if you happen to be someone who is a vendor coming up this, this year, or you have been a vendor in the past at Michigan Fiber Festival, I would love to hear from you. I'd love to hear uh, what your recommendations are, you know, um, your experience being a vendor at the Michigan Fiber Festival. If you happen to stumble upon me, <laughs> I would really appreciate any feedback because I, it's a learning curve. I've done art festivals before. Um, I've sold, I, I went, to, I went to school for painting, if I have not said this before. I haven't introduced myself in a while, so for those of you that are new, I actually um, started uh, in college. I got a Bachelor of Fine Arts in painting, so um, my emphasis was in painting. I have a wide variety of background in the arts, but I emphasize in painting, so mainly uh, oil painting, and I've done many painting, and I've sold them um, at fine arts fairs and festivals like that. So I've done that before. So I'm assuming it's kind of a similar idea. I, I just would always love feedback because of course it's just a different medium. So throw that out there. Anyway, let's get into the works in progress now that I've just rambled on for as long as I did. We'll start with the big cozy cardi and full disclosure, I started over, <laughs> you guys. So the texture that I thought was so nice and looked so great, I was looking at it and I don't know why, I just thought to myself, I wonder if that's right. Because as I was doing the pattern, the last stitch didn't quite ever match up and I should have known from that first row when it didn't match up that I was off by one stitch. And you know what? I counted it. I counted it. However, I counted it by literally just counting all the stitches. And what I should have done is counted it in sections and use stitch markers. And what I ended up doing, I put stitch marker every 25 stitches and then actually 30, every 30 stitches. <laughs> and then I multiplied that and then counted from the end of that when it was less than 30 stitches at the end. And I was off. I was off by one stitch. And the reason why I ripped back, because normally I, I am a big fan firm believer that sometimes you can just get away with it, <laughs> like just knit two together or whatever, but that doesn't work with this because of the way the stitches are, the patterning is creating a pattern to the fabric. And by doing that, it alters the pattern and it won't look right. So I did, I ripped back. I had like, I kid you not, you guys, I had like inches and inches and inches of knitting and now I am at maybe an inch and a, I think an inch and a, mm, inch and a half. I'd give myself that, that I'd say an inch and a half. I am totally mid round here or mid row, not mid round. It's, it's knitting a large panel is what you're currently doing. This is a paid for pattern. I do not want to give away too much information, of course, to be fair to the wonderful pattern designer. But this again is the big cozy cardi by Andrea Mowry super cozy. A lot, a lot of people are knitting it right now. It is a, a new pattern. Um, when I saw it, I just, I wanted it. It's so wonderful. It literally looks like a blanket that you get to wear. And I have something kind of similar, not the same, but similar. That is a crocheted cardigan that I made my very first crochet garment, actually. And I love that. I, I do. I haven't worn it in a while, but it's so easy to just throw on. This is going to be warmer because my the other one was acrylic 
and it's a much larger gauge, um, or not even gauge, the, uh, the patterning has a lot more airiness to it, so it's very open, where this is going to be a much tighter gauge, and so it should be a lot warmer, plus it's wool, so it will breathe uh, even better, and it will also keep you super cozy. And then the collar portion here is alpaca. Oh, it's my Surrey alpaca. It's so wonderful. So this is currently a just um, custom color. It's I can totally repeat it if you want it. I just don't currently have it um, in stock in the shop. So in other words, if you request it, I would dye it up specifically for you. <laughs> but this is chestnut colorway by Multivarious Nature, which is my hand, hand dyed yarn business. It's really beautiful. It's this wonderful tonal, warm, very warm and cozy looking brown, and it's absolutely gorgeous. And I think it would go with a lot of colors. It goes so much. And I'm going to be pairing it with my <clears throat> Autumn Kisses. Autumn, Autumn Kiss, there we go. <laughs> it's un unfurling Surrey Alpaca. I have this one actually uh, wound in a ball that has been used because this was remnants from a, a pair of mittens that I made. And this is what it looks like skeined up. It's super gorgeous, variegated. It is reminiscent and was dyed after the changing colors of the leaves here in Michigan. So many beautiful maple leaves. Uh, they're just absolutely gorgeous and there was one bush in particular actually on the grounds at work that I looked at and I saw these colors and I thought this is what it is going to be and it is basically when these the leaves start to change they go from more of a vibrant orangey red coral color and then they make their way to this really dark deep like burgundy red it's absolutely gorgeous so that's what this is autumn kiss and here it is all skeined up because more floofy, the colors look lighter, <laughs> of course. Um, <clears throat> but that's what I'm going to have as the collar for this, which I think is just going to be so much fun. <laughs> it'll just, it'll mainly be that very neutral brown, a cozy warm brown, but then it's going to have this fun, fun color on the collar, which I think is really fun because it kind of, it makes it like it's a scarf, but it's part of the shop, the cardigan. <laughs> to say shawl. It looks like a shawl around your neck, but it's attached to the cardigan. So I'm really excited about this. But as you can see, <laughs> I was almost done with this skein, you guys. I was almost done with this skein. It's 100% Peruvian Highland wool base that I have. And look at that beautiful sheen. I'm telling you, I love Peruvian Highland wool. It is so cozy. And I was <laughs> I was so bummed because I was almost done with the, the first skein. And I literally did, I unwound it and bound it into a ball because it was caked up, you guys. This was the cake that it originally was and I was almost done with it and then I had to wind it into a ball. I can't believe it. So, there we go. So that's the Big Cozy Cardi by Andrew Mowry. This is the correct uh, texture stitch because I have the correct stitch count and it follow is following the pattern. So when I get to the end of the row, I am at a matching pattern. So... And this is the way it's supposed to look. <laughs> you know, that it just, you know, if you, when in doubt, like if you go through the first row and it doesn't match your pattern, just recount your stitches. Just do it. And not only recount them, recount them by using stitch markers. Be like I use removable ones. Just do that. Do yourself a favor because if you're off by one, you'll save yourself the headache of going and ripping it all out. Sometimes it's actually kind of, I don't know. It feels kind of good to rip something out, but not when it's something that takes quite a bit of time. It's actually very relaxing to knit this pattern, but it takes quite a bit of time because it's well over like 300 stitches for this big triangle that you're going to make. And it's going to be like really big. So just saying <laughs> that was kind of a bummer, I have to say. So I'm getting there. I am getting there, but learning curve. See, everybody does it. Everybody does it. All right. So the next work in progress is the What Tomorrow Brings shawl. This is my massive printed out pattern. This is a pattern that was designed with the Suburban Stitcher Advent for 2022. And I did actually get the 2022 Advent from Suburban Stitcher for Christmas. 
so I am doing the pattern with it. I didn't have to do that, but it came with the pattern and it looks like a beautiful pattern, so why not? Let me see if I can show you a picture of it. Here we go. So this is what it looks like in black and white, so it doesn't give too much away. It is a beautiful triangle shawl. I'm a huge triangle shawl fan. It's my favorite shawl shape. It's, to me, it's extremely flattering and versatile. So I do love that shape. And I am working my way across it. I am on day eight. I am not trying to do like one color a day. I am just letting myself go through it as I am able. And I am loving every minute of this pattern. It is very wonderful. I made a mistake yesterday and I just tinked back. It was just like two rows. I, you know, oops, it happens. And of course I'm also mid row on this because of course I am, you know, that's what happens when you're, when you're just kind of going along. But here's where I'm at so far. Like I said, I am on day eight. So color eight, these are all extremely delicate colors. I'm gonna have to hold them back like this because they'll get so blown out, they'll just all look like gray or white or they'll just get blasted out. But as you can see, they very much are different colors. <laughs> there are kind of gray colors going on as well, but they are all very light, subtle, changed colors, absolutely beautiful, very reminiscent of the inspiration photo that she showed, and I am loving it. It's wonderful. This is going to be a pretty versatile shawl, I think, that I could wear with a lot of things, which I love. <laughs> and it's just absolutely gorgeous. So it is on just her, um, her 75, 25 base. So your typical sock base. And I am currently working on this gorgeous lace section. Very pretty. I, I love it because there's just so many different textures. There's some lace here, lace here, um, all these other different sections. Um, she has different names for each of these stitch, stitch things. And it's really fun. I, I love it great learning experience and then the really nice part is after a lot of these very intricate stitch which is not intricate to the point that it's hard <laughs> it's just intricate where you have to pay some attention then you get some garter like breaks in between which is really nice it makes it a lot of fun and and visually interesting and I'm just loving knitting on it so much it's really fun I would so far I would definitely replicate the shawl with more yarn I'm getting to the point now where I have so many minis as leftovers from um, all these different advents that I've created as well as purchased, um, as well, received as gifts. Um, so I could definitely create quite a bit of different things. And as I mentioned in my last video, there is a pattern that I purchased called Little Leftovers. And it is also by Stephanie Lovett uh, of Telly Bean Knits same person who did the What Tomorrow Brings shawl, and she designed it to use the remnants of the Suburban Stitcher advent, but it gives you the weight. I'm pretty sure it gives you the weight in grams. I hope it does. I just want to double check so I'm not telling you guys fibs here. Um, okay, just kidding. It does not give you the weight, which I have to say is a little bit of a bummer. I kind of wish she would have given the weight. She gave the yard edge, which is not a huge deal. However, that makes it so the person making it kind of has to do the math themselves to figure out if they have enough yarn. Where if you had to do it by grams, for the most part, if you have a scale of any kind that's small, like that can weigh in grams, you could just weigh your yarn and then you'd know if you'd have enough. So, I mean, you can figure out math to do it, but that takes doing math and not everybody wants to do math all the time but anyway versatile pattern it seems like I haven't done it yet but yeah it looks like a lot of fun so anyway that's an, and an idea is to do little projects like that it's a cowl and so you know you can do that with lots of different little minis and now that I have like I said a wide variety of little leftover minis I can just go through it and put colors together that I like and it can just be a variation of my advents and other advents and I just love it and it's so much fun creativity right guys it's the best part you can make things your own okay 
So the that's the works in progress section that I've been doing and working on diligently. I did not work on my Mayel classic socks this week. I know, I know. They're sitting right here next to me from last week and I did not get to knit on them. But I want to. I just got distracted by other things that I also like to knit on and because I got so distracted, these didn't, they got missed. But anyway, they are still here. Don't worry, I'll work on them again. Again, this is the Mayel Classic Socks. They're still a work in progress. I'm just not working on them at the moment. Like, I will be. I will. This next week, I'll work on my Mayel Classics. I just didn't. So far. <laughs> Again, this is my Oh Christmas Tree Sock set, which I do currently have some in the shop. They're right here behind me. And, um, yeah, you can pick that up and make yourself a wonderful pair of socks. And I do so far recommend the Mayel Classic socks. I very much recommend the Mayel shorties. I've made them at least twice and that's by the pattern is by Fox and Fig. All right the next is the what's next. All right so for those of you that are new you may not be familiar with this. For those of you who have been with me a bit you probably haven't seen this in a while because I'm pretty positive this is my second, no, first, no, second, <laughs> second ever knit long sleeve garment, pretty positive, pretty positive, and I used a wonderful Let Lopi yarn, which is Icelandic yarn, it's basically, it's the same, it's, it's um, Elefoss is the company, and it's uh, <coughs> Iztex, excuse me, Elefoss I think is the store, and Iztex is the brand. Um, it's the same as Plotolopi, but it is spun. <laughs> so, Letlopi, that's what this is, and I really like this sweater. I have worn it multiple times. I have, however... With those multiple times that I've worn it, I have started to realize it is, I mean, it is large. I'm, I'm not going to make any bones about it. It is a very oversized sweater. And it's cozy, don't get me wrong, and I love it. However, I find myself wearing it as like a little throw over when I went out, when I go outside. When I used to knit outside in the cooler months. And I have not reached for it. I don't think I've reached for it yet this year, or well, this past year in 2022. I might have worn it maybe once, and once I came into the house to do anything, I took it off because my pet peeve that I've talked about, I have talked about this before, the sleeves are nice and long, not a problem, but they're huge. They're very voluminous, <laughs> and unlike the... Um, forager sweater that I just finished where I made them kind of poofy little balloon sleeves but I made them to the cuff length so they work great I don't dip my arms and things when I'm cleaning and stuff like that these don't work like that if I'm cleaning or doing dishes in this I will get my sleeve wet I'll dip it probably in food it's no good so I have I have decided because I'm trying to go through and organize things clothes all that I have decided since I am not wearing it as much as I would like to, which is so sad because it's beautiful wool. I am going to, I'm going to rip it up back. I know. Don't cringe, guys. I, I don't do it often, but <laughs> actually, I don't think I've, uh, I don't think I've done it yet to a finished garment, but I want to, I want to wear it. I really want to wear it. So I, this sweater was the brick sweater. Apologize. I do not recall the person who made it. If you go on my Ravelry, I do have it listed on there, and I, I do have the pattern on there for the project, so that'll tell you who the designer is. And I made it oversized. It, a lot of it had to do with my gauge issues. I used needles that were too big. You can see, kind of see, it's a rather airy fabric. I definitely would make it a tighter gauge. Because the thing I've noticed also with this is that it started to grow when I was wearing it. So 
Uh, I, I specifically remember an incident <laughs> where I was wearing it and I was sitting on the couch next to my husband and he looked at me and he said, he's like, oh, the back of your sweater looks like it's going to come apart. And I was like, oh my gosh. And, I, and I'm like, that's, that's crazy. No way. Well, I was looking at the back of the sleeve here. And you see how that's like all stretched out like this? It's it's just stretching out and it really was because the stitches just I think needed to be tighter. They just need to be tighter for the type of wool it is. Uh, plus a little piece like that too if it's not knit. Now it's not gonna break I don't think but it's slightly growing which means I just don't think the gauge was right for it. I really don't. Um, I just want, I was winging it, you know, I was doing my own thing and it's a learning experience. You guys <laughs> knitting is a learning experience. You can, you can go rogue from patterns. You totally can, but definitely gauge swatch. And you know, I really didn't, I didn't gauge swatch. I didn't, um, I've gotten a little bit better to do like little gauge swatches for garments. I don't for like shawls and stuff. I really don't. But when it comes to garments, I do. And I'm by gauge swatch. I just knit a couple rows. It's not actually a traditional gauge swatch, but I knit a couple rows and then I look at that. And if it matches, <laughs> then we're good. But this one, I, I guarantee it would not match. And yeah, we're gonna we're gonna rip this back. Um, there's a lot of beautiful wool in here. I purchased this wool. It is vintage Reynolds Let Lopi. It was from eBay and I got a great deal on it. And it's a beautiful color. It's a beautiful brown. And then I found this one at um, a thrift store actually. And it is also, I, I'm positive <laughs> that it is also Lopi. It's a gorgeous, like almost gray uh, oatmeal -y color. And I just did some color work and I winged it. I totally winged it. I didn't do proper math or anything for it. And if I had, I would have known that there would be, <laughs> if you look at the front of this, you can see there's like this line where the pattern, it just didn't, it didn't work. And that was where my, I'm pretty sure that was my beginning of round was right there. And so there's this funny little like blip there. So it totally was a learning experience and it was a lot of fun to make. And I love knitting with, um, this technically is spun. Let Lopi is spun yarn, um, but it is single ply. So yeah, it's basically put to Lopi, but spun. So anyway, we'll rip that out. I'm committed to it. I'm going to frog it. I'm going to frog it and, uh, get that wound into balls and then be able to make something else out of it. I'll definitely make another sweater because this is beautiful wool for a sweater and I have enough for a sweater, clearly, because this is a very oversized sweater. I could make a more fitted one or even, again, a um, nice big sweater, but more fitted in my arms, definitely. Then I'll get more use out of it if it's fitted in my arms. <laughs> I will start to learn the things that you like, you guys, and make clothes that you will wear often because it takes so much time, right? You know, it takes so much time. I would hate to make something that I would just wear like maybe once a year and that's it. That just doesn't seem worth it with the amount of work that I put into it. That's for sure. So there you go. Do you guys have any projects that you're gonna frog this year? I'd love to hear from you. Please let me know. I know I'm not the only one who's got a project. They're like, eh, this is not gonna happen this year or, or, you know, you've decided to frog a project that you don't, you know, you just don't want to fault, you don't want to finish <laughs> because you thought it would be great and you thought it would be what you wanted and it's not. So, you know, we could do it, you know, take it apart and use it. Use the wool for something that you'll love and enjoy or, or a gift that someone else will love and enjoy. So there you have it. But I'd love to hear from you guys. I hope you're doing well. You know, I hope you're creating and I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear what you're up to and I will catch up with you soon. Have a great rest of your week. Take care. Bye.